everyone. Hi. My name is Doreen Benyamin, and we are doing another live episode of Before You Take the LSAT. Before You Take the LSAT is a live video interview series where I, te I speak to current law students, recent grads, um, or lawyers about their career path, getting to where they are now. Um, today, I'm very lucky in that I get to interview Angel. Angel is a classmate at Columbia Law School. Mm -hmm. She is involved in the Black Law Students Association. She's involved in LAS, the High School Law Student Institute, the Columbia Business Law Association, and she also started her own YouTube channel with another one of our classmates, yeah. Samantha, um, called Angel and Sam LLP. I'll let her explain it a little bit more than this, but she speaks a lot about her experiences in law school and her YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Hi, Angel. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Uh, it's really I'm nice excited. to spend your Sunday or some of your Sunday doing this with me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited to talk to you more about your experiences and um, hopefully share it with other people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as usual, you're welcome to ask any questions if you have on the side there. We typically keep it for the end of the interview, but you can submit it at any time. Um, and just if you haven't seen these interviews before, I tend to talk about her career path, starting mostly with uh, a little bit of family background, a little bit, a bit of her experience in undergrad, in law school and what she's currently doing now. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions about that or anything else um, related to her, you're welcome to ask. So let's right. get started. How right. are you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's a nice gloomy day today. I know. It looks like so nasty outside. Yeah. At least, you know, we get to do this yeah. inside, indoors. Um, so, okay. Can you speak a little bit about your background growing up? Yeah. Um, and your influences? Yeah. So I'm from Houston. I'm like, I'm born and raised in Texas. And... I'm from a really big family. Like I have four older siblings. I'm the youngest of five, so being like the youngest is also it's just like a whole other thing in itself. But I'm Nigerian. Um, I'm first generation American. My parents came to America in the '80s, so that's definitely had a big impact on just like how I live my life, I guess. Um, especially when your parents are kind of removed from you culturally, and like you're experiencing things growing up that like they never experienced back home in Nigeria. So you kind of like. Me and my siblings kind of like learned a lot of things about America for ourselves from like TV or from like our friends from school and things like that. Um, so it's influenced me a lot. It's making it's made me a little bit more driven, I think, just like seeing how hard their or hearing about how hard their backgrounds were and like the things they had to do to get here and stay here and things like that just makes me feel, I guess, blessed and honored and like a little privileged to like be an American citizen. So. Do you think it helped that you had your siblings like they might have? been able to experience some of the things before you did and tell you a little bit about it? Yeah, things like prom. Like, my parents <laughs> are like, what the hell is that? Like, what's prom? You know, but, like, my sisters already went through that. So, like, I didn't have to... I didn't have to do anything first, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, so, by the time it got to me, like, homecoming was normal now and, like, playing but sports you, was normal now. were the first to go to law school. I was the first to go to law school and I'm the okay. first to leave Texas. That's, that's amazing. Pretty much. Like, no one else left Texas for school or for... And you left for Duke? Yeah, I left for undergrad that, and that I'm was, still yeah. gone. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, and that was not normal. So I guess I've kind of went against the grain a little bit, but they helped me. If I didn't have my older siblings, I don't think I would be able to, like, Do that. be so extreme now, like, be across the country and things like that. So when you were thinking about places, okay, did you know that you wanted to go into law before you even started at Duke, or was it while you were at Duke that you realized? It was while I was at Duke. Before okay. I got to Duke, I kind of, I knew what my interests were. Like, I knew that I really liked numbers. I knew that I didn't like science, and everyone in my family was, like, in the health field. My mom's a nurse, my sister's a nurse, and, like, that was just kind of the thing you did in the Nigerian community in Houston. Like, everyone just kind of went into the medical field or went into the health field. And I knew that wasn't interesting to me. So I knew more so like what I didn't want to do. But I didn't know what I actually wanted to do until I got to Duke and I just like learned more about business. And I was like, huh, like I like business and like business strategy. And like if I can be on the problem solving end and be a lawyer, like that'd be really cool. So then that's just kind of like what got me into it. Uh, so when you were thinking about different undergrads, it sounded like you have a lot, of, a lot of options. So how did you decide which school that you wanted to go to for undergrad? Um, it was kind of like a process of elimination. I wasn't as intentional as a 17, 18 year old as I am now, but I kind of just like <laughs> applied to a bunch of schools. So I was like, I don't want to be in Texas. I want to go away for school. I was like, 
wanted to be different or whatever. So I applied to only like two in-state schools and like all out-of-state schools. And whenever I'd like be watching TV and hear someone talk about a school, I'd apply. Like I had like no, <laughs> I didn't like research it. I didn't do anything. Like I'd heard someone, I think my sister said, talked about Duke in passing one day. Yeah. She's like, oh, we have a friend that, I have a friend that went to Duke. And I was like, okay, I'll apply. Like I didn't even research it or anything. Um, so when it came time to decide, I kind of just like crossed off California schools because it was really far and too expensive. And then I kind of just like did process of elimination. And I was like, oh, Duke gave me a lot of financial aid and like it's a good school. They're good at research, whatever. So then I just like decided to go there. So while you were there, did you have any specific experiences that helped you realize that law might be for you? Um, I think it was the classroom setting and like just being around people that were so different from me. I minored in sociology. And, and, and economics major, yeah. Yeah, I was an economics mm -hmm. major. I minored in sociology and like learning about sociology and the way people live and like just learning about structural issues just made me want to have a structural career, I guess, and the law is just like, it's our system, it's like the way we operate in America or around the world, so I was like, oh, this is a very, it's a way to like have a career that's more structural and like less individual, but so, individualistic. So, so you said nobody in your family did law, but did you have like extended family or did you have anyone in the community that you saw going through that process? Um, I didn't see anyone going through the process, I had like one of my uncles is a lawyer, not blood uncle, but like one of those people that's like your mom's friends, so you call them uncle. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I knew I, I knew of him and I know everyone was like, oh, you gotta talk to Uncle Frank, he's a lawyer. And I'm like, oh yeah, Uncle Frank's a lawyer. But like besides him, yeah. I didn't have any close family that was like in law or even considered it at all. So it was kind of like, why do you want to do that? You know, I kind of had to constantly explain myself. Um, was that tough at all or, or were you so determined this is your path that you I was determined to be different, I think. <laughs> you like the fact that you I had like to... the fact that I was like, oh, y'all don't even know about <laughs> this. And like, I got to explain it. And it's not the typical whatever. And now I think it's a little bit more common. But like, at the time, no one was really... Really? In, the, in these past few years, it's been a huge... I think so. I've had a lot of people from the YouTube channel that me and Sam have. And just from like posting on social media, I have a lot of people from home that are like hit me up. and like, I'm interested in law school. Like, how do you do it? And it's becoming a lot more... It's, those questions have become a lot more frequent, so I think people are starting to like drift away a little bit more in, in our Nigerian community from just doing medicine. There are a lot more artists now and creatives, and like people just wanting to be themselves. Why do you think medicine was so popular um, back for people back home? I think like the health field is just more stable. Like when the whole financial crisis happened, my mom used to like come home every day. She's like, "See, I still have a job because I'm a nurse, <laughs> and like no matter what happens, it people get like sick." Such a mom's tone. Yeah, it's like people get sick no matter what, and that's very attractive yeah. to think like your job isn't based on like the economic cycle, yeah. and you're always gonna have a job security. I think just like that provider and parents, they just want you to have that security. They're very scared, um, so I can, I can understand it, but it's just not what I wanted. Even though you didn't decide to like follow her career path, do you think that the um, experiences that you saw your mom going through in terms of her career path affected your decision making? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> My mom is very, I mean, she's rational, you know, like she, yeah. even if I'm not, even though I want to do corporate law and that can, that can be cyclical with like the economy, I still, it's still a very structured path, you know, like there's still like three years and like there's a career path that's there and I, I feel like it is a little bit stable, especially at a school like Columbia. I, I think it's very, very stable yeah. and very structured. Right, especially at a school like Columbia where you can kind of count on getting a job after. So yeah. I wasn't taking like a huge risk, even though I was doing something different from her. So I definitely learned a lot from the way my mom makes decisions. Did you also like look at your siblings and, and see what they were doing and be like, nope, no, I don't want to do that. Nope, I don't want to do that. Or like... um, A just, little bit. Just, it was you know. more so like I was happy for them, like what they were doing, but I knew that what they the thing yeah, they were yeah. doing wouldn't make that, me that's happy. what I mean that's what yeah. I mean so you kind of got the insight firsthand of what they were experiencing and thinking like that's not something I see myself doing yeah exactly I don't see myself being an epidemiologist as much as I love my <laughs> sister she loves it you know she's been very successful at it but that's not something that would make me happy personally so it was nice to see them go through that and like know that I don't want to do that so at Duke what were some of the things that you were involved with that you think helped shape your path um Duke I was so involved. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I was, I kind of came maybe, in and I was maybe like, maybe the Greek life. Yeah, I came in and I was like, I'm going to do everything. So I was in Greek life. I'm a Delta and I joined my sophomore year. 
So that was obviously like a huge part of like my undergrad experience. You were I president. Was, yeah, I was president my senior year. Okay. Um, and that just gave me so much leadership experience that it's so hard to explain. Yeah. It's, it's hard to be, it's hard to lead your peers, I realize, in that experience. Because you're like, it's a sisterhood and everyone's on the same level. But then at the same time, you have to pull out that like president hat sometimes. You're like, okay, this, got, this has to get done. And that, is, that is a fine line. It's yeah, hard. it's a fine line. And you have to learn a lot about how to communicate with people in a way that they will be receptive. So that's kind of like learn people's personalities and realize that like, just saying things how I want to say them. Like everyone isn't going to receive it the same. that the same way. Yeah. Everyone doesn't receive criticism the same way. Everyone doesn't receive instruction the same way. So like I learned a lot about how to, I guess like be a flexible leader and just like adapt to like what feedback I'm getting. Did you have, to, excuse me, did you have to keep like a, a certain level of separation because you were president and they were also, it was also a, like a friendly environment? Um, luckily, no. Okay, I that's didn't. Good. Yeah. I think everyone understood, like, this is just my role. And, like, I'm not do saying anything to be mean or to be, like, authoritative. It's just that we have to, we have, we have guidelines, we have events, you know, things have to get planned. And, like, I'm trying to make sure, like, our chapter is good. So that's something that you've continued to stay involved with, like, since Duke. You've done that even in New York City. You've been meeting people who are... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's like a... No matter where you go, it's kind of like you meet someone. That... So in, in that sense, has that affected your path at all, do you think? It's definitely helped me a lot with like staying connected and feeling um, feeling like I have a home wherever I go. Like coming to D.C., like we're in, I don't know if they know we're in D.C. right now. I don't now. think they know. <laughs> we're in D.C. right now. Um, and I think it didn't even feel like I was moving to a new city because like so many people from my chapter are here. Um, like, some of my line sisters are here, and, like, some people that came, like, before me are here. So I can just reach out to them and be like, hey, can we, like, meet up for drinks? And So it feels like a home almost. Yeah, it feels like a home, even though I've never lived here before. So I want to clarify, because we didn't talk about it, but you worked at Paul Hastings after your 1L summer. Mm -hmm. So you had a firm experience there. And then this summer, which is after your, your second year, mm -hmm. 2L, um, you worked at Cleary Gottlieb, mm -hmm. and you split it between New York for the first half, and now you're in D.C., which is where we are now, mm -hmm. for the second half, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And um, I just, before we get to that, though, I just want to see if there's anything else that in your undergrad that you thought kind of had an impact on you. And actually, yeah, so, mm -hmm. let's, so what about the Jackie Robinson Foundation that you were part of? I think that would be really interesting to hear about. Yeah, um... The Jackie Robinson Foundation, also BSA. I saw about BSA first since it was like at Duke, and I was like a programming director for that. And wait, just to clarify, mm -hmm. so um, you weren't really involved in anything that had to do with like law school stuff, but these are things no. that still helped your career path. Yeah. And can you just explain what BSA and the Jackie Robinson Foundation are? It's a scholarship, right? Yeah. Are so, they both scholarships? No. So Black Student Association. Okay. That's like an association okay, right. in undergrad. Yeah. Whereas the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Um, is a scholarship foundation, but it's more than a scholarship because they have a mentoring and leadership conference every year. So like everyone gets together in New York every year in February. That's cool. And it's like a three to four day like intensive. There's like seminars, there's just like galas and different things to kind of like teach you and help you become a better professional. Um, and they, yeah, you're right. Even though it wasn't related to law specifically, I learned a lot about how to conduct myself in a legal setting and there were things I just had never experienced, just like being from Houston and being from like, I don't know, I wasn't really rich growing up or anything like that. And we had etiquette classes so that when you go to these fancy dinners, you know, hey, like start from the outside in. Like no one would ever know that if no one ever tells you about it. Um, I didn't have a passport. I had never left the country. I had never been on a plane. So yeah. they kind of like provided all those first times for me. They like got us passports. They paid for me to go abroad, things like that. Just kind of like opened my whole world view to like another way to live. Really it cool. sounds like a really like all encompassing kind of yeah. scholarship. Like they're really trying to broaden your horizons in many different ways. Yeah, they always say giving you exactly. They always say it's not just the check, even though the check's nice. Yeah, but, like it's not just the check. It's that we want you to be prepared after you graduate from undergrad, which I feel like I was. So, so all of these experiences that you had with them was during undergrad. No, so they actually have an option right. where okay, you can yeah. apply yeah. and be. Um, an extra inning scholar if you're, going to, if you're going to grad school. So I applied and I got it. That's so awesome. They've also been like assisting me the first two years of law school, which is really cool. I still go to the conferences and I still like am connected to the foundation. So, so if, if someone's interested in applying for it, is it what is the what's the process like? 
Oh man, I, which process? Jack Robinson Foundation or the yeah. extra innings? Oh, um, I think this was senior year of high school, so it's kind of like a long time ago. But I remember having to like submit letters of recommendation, write an essay, things yeah. like that. So, but you, you heard about it through school, and then you just decided to apply for it? And no, so I so Jackie Robinson went to UCLA, and okay. I applied to UCLA for undergrad. Yeah. Um, and then after I was accepted, they were like, "Hey, you look like you'll be a good candidate for the scholarship that like is connected to our school." So I applied, even though I ended up not going to UCLA, I still got the scholarship. That's amazing. Um, so I kind of learned about it. That random process I talked about before, like yeah. just applying to schools randomly, yeah. it kind of like benefited me because I would have never found out about the foundation, would have never applied and have never even thought to apply. So. I think that's the interesting thing, like doing these interviews, uh, like everybody talks about their path and mm -hmm. it's all so different and we all ended up at the same place. I know. You know? Yeah. So it's really interesting to hear how you just kind of did these things randomly and then you came to this point. Yeah. It's funny because I, I thought they were random at the time, but it seems like it it's all, all connected. Out. All connected, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all connected. Um, okay, so then, okay, so that so those were basically the involvements that you did while you were an undergrad that mm -hmm. were helpful to you to get to this point. Mm -hmm. um, or some of them. I was involved in so many things, but I think like Delta, BSA, Jackie Robinson Foundation were definitely like really big it's influencers. Yeah. And also in terms of the things that you took away from your experience in the Jackie Robinson Foundation, like mm -hmm. the things that they taught you, mm -hmm. can you say like two or three specific things that were takeaways? From like their my experiences there? Yeah, like in terms of the things that they taught you to prepare for mm -hmm. law school, like things that you should know. Yeah, I think a lot of their networking tips are really helpful, just yeah. like professional school is not undergrad, I guess, and like even though we're friends and like everyone's friendly like you kind of these are people that are going to be your peers and like your working peers in the future so like keeping that in mind is something that I've, I've done um just like trying to be friendly with everyone and like it's genuine but it's also it can also be strategic in terms of like you're going to be working at a firm with this person or like who knows like what's going to happen down the line um also just like finding good mentors the foundation's like big on like mentoring and making sure you that like, you're reaching back. Yeah, I have a lot of people that like help me out and check how in many, on me. How many would you say? Like, I, I know that they're probably not all formal, but yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Because they're not formal, it's like hard to count. Right, them. right. I would say like strong mentors throughout law school, maybe like two or three. Okay. That kind of like. Are I they lawyers? Go. Yeah, they're lawyers. Wow. Well, they were law students when I was applying, but now they've graduated. That's incredible. Yeah. That's even, that's even, I think that's maybe even more helpful because then you got to watch them throughout the process. Yeah. Especially on Instagram, I see the little pictures. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, like law school looks fun. Like all these proms and stuff. <laughs> LOL. <Yeah. laughs> and now you experience it yeah, yourself. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. Instagram is deceiving. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, those one or two pictures it, when you weren't studying. It, exactly. Yeah. But I appreciate them. Like, it's so good to have genuine people that like have your best interest at heart and yeah. tell you the real. I think that's one of the hard things about law school is that yeah. everyone puts like a rosy yes. little gloss on everything. Like, oh, this wasn't that hard or like this isn't that bad. And they'll tell me straight up, like, this is what you need to do. Like, this is how hard it is. This is the lack of diversity. All the issues that you face in the legal world, they're very, very honest with me. And it's hard to get that a little bit outside of genuine connections, I think. Okay, so speaking about lack of diversity, mm -hmm. what was your experience like when you started at Columbia? Did you, did, did you feel that, was that something that you felt immediately on your own? I was pleasantly surprised at the diversity at Columbia. Okay. I kind of expected this rain, OMG. I know. <laughs> it's like a storm. It's actually a storm. Yeah. I'm not leaving this <laughs> today. But I this actually... a good activity. I know. It's a good activity to do this live because outside looks terrible. Um, but I expected to be... I expected less... I don't know what you like. What your experience was, but I expected there to be a lot less diversity at Columbia. So I was pleasantly surprised at like the number of people of color that were there, the different experiences. There are people that like went straight through, people that didn't go straight through, people like had PhDs and different things. So like... I think Columbia, relative, really relative to other law schools, does a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the, I don't have the ability to compare it so much. I haven't seen so much what other law schools are like, but I know that once, I didn't I didn't know what to expect coming in, mm -hmm. but seeing how diverse our class was in every way, just like you're saying, mm -hmm. I was really really impressed. Yeah, because it really does bring a lot to the classroom. I, yeah, I agree. So when people ask me about law school, like what I think, I'm always. It's always the people, our mm -hmm. classmates, yeah. that I think are most impressive. Yeah, they're, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it would be a lot worse. <laughs> um, I've watched all those scary movies about like law <laughs> Scary <school>. movies? <laughs> yeah, like they make, did you watch The Paper Chase? Uh, that, yeah. That movie yeah. scared the hell yeah, out of me. Yeah. I was like, people are going to be crazy and like. But you knew that it wasn't real. 
Yeah, I know it's not real, but it kind of still like leaves an impression that like people are gonna be. Did you also read books? Like, I read um, one book. I can't remember what it was called. Getting to maybe. That's like or uh, no, law school that. confidential. No, I didn't read that either. Okay, I read a book on like legal arguments. So I was oh, talking about like nice. That's actually um, sounds like it'd be more helpful. Yeah, I was talking about, like the the arguments judges make and like sticky staircase first. What's the other thing they always say in law school? Uh, like slippery a, slope. A slippery slope. I went to like the slippery slope <laughs> argument. Things that like I could have just googled was like the law school. I read a whole book on it, and it wasn't super helpful, but like it just made me feel more prepared and like gave yeah. me confidence before. And then the summer, I mean, one of your videos on your YouTube channel, you talked about this a little bit, but the summer before law school, you decided to just relax a little bit, which I yeah. think some people do. Like, I, I, again, I think everybody does something a little bit different, mm -hmm. but are you happy, like, t like, that you took time off a little bit before you started? I am. Um, because you're came, straight through, right? I'm straight through. Yeah, and straight I came through. into law school, like, very, feeling very calm and relaxed. Like, I hadn't just finished some internship. I wasn't finishing some program. Like, I had spent time with my family, my friends. I, like, worked a little bit. Yeah. I came in very chill and, like... I guess ready to study. <laughs> um, everything okay? Yeah, no, I was just checking the time. Oh, okay. Um, oh, it's hard for me to see. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm really. I if I could go back, I would relax even more. I highly, <laughs> I highly recommend it because like law school, you're gonna start, you're gonna be reading all the time, and you don't have, you don't get that time back. So right. I really like that. I just kind of chilled before. Do you feel young in law school? Um, no, actually I don't. Okay. I think people are like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't feel like younger than everyone else, even though I guess technically I probably am. So you, I straight think through. you are, yeah. But I don't feel that way. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I think it's good to like not feel like that. Yeah. I think I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you are. No, no, no. I just mean it in terms of like you personally from mm -hmm. your from your own experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like in general, everyone is, uh, <clears throat> everyone has like a very good level of maturity in general. Mm -hmm. I think everybody comes into law school pretty serious. Yeah, they're like ready to, <laughs> ready to read. <laughs> um, was there anything else when you started law school that kind of surprised you? Or it, uh, besides it not being like paper chase? Not being like paper chase. <laughs> I was surprised at how like genuinely interested I was in our 1-0 classes. Yeah? I, I feel like really like a big nerd saying that, but like I thought... I think that is unique. I thought it was so interesting. Like, I love the pros so much. I don't think it's normal to, like, like a class that much. But I'll be reading the cases, like, wow, like, this is how it works. Like, this is how you It wasn't the, the professor floor. at all? It was the professor, too. <laughs> we had a lot of people who liked our professor. Yeah, I really liked our professor. Yeah. I was in office hours, like, all the time. <laughs> That's good. It motivates you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I really, I genuinely like 1L, which I think is, unique compared to what I hear other people say but academically I thought it was interesting what about social socially um I think I was a little bit more social second semester first mm -hmm. semester I was kind of just like with Sam the person I have my friend I have the YouTube channel with me and her were just kind of like studying all the time we didn't do that much we kind of like went to parties sometimes like we went to social gatherings sometimes for the most part we were just studying um I think second semester so like I made a few more friends and Socially, I think it's fine, but I think it's very, I don't know, it's a little bit hard, I think, to, like, make friends in law school. <laughs> I mean, everyone has been saying that, like, about yeah. their experiences as a 1L. It's like, everyone felt a little isolated, mm -hmm. and they everybody seemed to feel isolated on their own. Which is crazy, you know? Like, yeah. we're all in there together, but everybody felt kind of isolated. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I've made really good friends in law school. Like, it's been really, especially 2L, and, like, I've made really good friends and met a lot of people I connect with. But I think during 1L, it's probably, like, hard to make friends because everyone's studying on their own. So what was the process like getting the 1L summer job mm -hmm. and working at a law firm? Because not everybody does that. So. Yeah. I applied over Christmas break. Um, I applied a little bit late. I heard a lot of people started applying like December 1st, but I wasn't aware of that. So I kind of waited till right after Christmas and I just applied to like as many firms as I could. And at the time I thought I wanted to be in Texas. So I only applied to firms with like a Houston office or a Dallas office. And that's like actually not smart because those markets are so much smaller and they have like one or two summer spots or like three or four. And this isn't something I thought about at the time. So all of a sudden, before I know it, it's February, and I don't have a job, and all I applied to were firms, and I was, like, freaking out. So I actually went to the Jackie Robinson Foundation Conference, wow. 
and we have like these family sessions where like you kind of vent about what's going on and I was like I'm so scared I don't have a job like I don't know what to do and they were like talk to so-and-so like he works at Paul Hastings and like maybe he can like give me a resume so I gave him my resume he gave the recruiters my resume and like and that was in New York that was in New York and then that's how I got Paul Hastings it was like amazing that's like a very I feel like that's a very unique story yeah it was like yeah. <laughs> not just because it was through Jackie Robinson Foundation but yeah just like finding it through a friend. I feel like most people kind of just apply directly. People apply directly. And I think people come to law school and forget to like use their networking skills that they learned in undergrad. Like it doesn't stop, I think. It's what you know and it's who you know still in law school. So like getting to know people and giving them your resume and like building those connections, I think helps. I think, but part of it maybe at Columbia is that it's such, it's already so nicely like organized mm -hmm. that I don't feel like most people, people don't feel the need. Yeah. Yeah. I see that too. Cause I definitely like, it's so structured. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the regular path, I feel like you, you don't necessarily need to. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I guess now, like, you're looking back, like, you know something that you didn't know then. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful to know that, that maybe it's not the best to apply to, like, the smaller markets. Yeah, I've, if I could go back, I, I mean, if I could go back, I would do it again only because I liked what happened and, like, it was a good experience. <laughs> like, yeah. I ended up at a good firm and, like, I learned a lot from it, but... It would have been a lot less stressful if I would have like applied early and applied to New York and tried to like get to another market that way. So, so what was your experience like at Paul Hastings, and what practice practice area were you in while you were there? Yeah, I think Paul Hastings was good. Like I enjoyed my experience there. I think all firms struggle with diversity, and they definitely struggle with diversity as well, um, which is one of the most alarming things that I noticed when I first got there. But aside from that, the practice areas were good. I worked on. Um, funds and like capital markets and things like that. I was mainly just like changing terms. I wasn't doing anything like super substantive as a winnow summer since I didn't know that much at the time. Um, we did like a we did like a bunch of um, workshops. We did like a deposition workshop, a negotiation workshop, which I thought was super helpful. Um, so I liked it. The summer class was really was it a one L summer class? No, it was there were only two one L summers. Yeah. Um, and there were only like twenty something summers in general. Wow. So like, you get to know everyone really, really well. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So I liked it. Like I learned a lot and I learned a lot about like the type of environment the type of work environment I want to work in and like what I should have prioritized going into the recruiting process for two So what did you learn? What were the things that you learned from that experience? I learned that like diversity is definitely a priority for me. Um and it's not something I realized before that experience, but I just realized like being in the office and not feeling comfortable is not something I'd want to do every single day. Yeah. Um, and it's hard because at a firm, like, that's kind of, it's your life. You're there for so long and, like, you put in so many hours that it would just be too taxing to be, like, a different person at work and a different person at home. So I realized I wanted to be somewhere where I can kind of merge those two a little bit more and, like, actually be myself at work. Um, so I, that was, like, one of my priorities going in. And then after that, like, practice area and, like, I mean, the only, like is, the only way you would really know if you're in that sense is if you visit the office. Yeah, visiting the office and talking to people from Columbia that work at that firm that aren't in recruiting. <laughs> that aren't in recruiting, that's the key, Yeah, because right? like, they give you the truth. And a lot of minorities, too. Like, I talked to a lot of black associates wherever I was interviewing, like, that people that weren't in recruiting. I'm like, how is your experience here? Like, do you feel like diversity is prioritized? Do you feel valued in this space? Because that was so important to me. Um, and people were really honest with me, which I really appreciated. Do you feel valued now at your firm? Yeah, I do. Okay. I think they've showed a strong commitment to diversity. I still think all firms suck at diversity. Like, I think no one's good at it, but like some prioritize it more than others. Um, and I think I'm at one that prioritizes it more than others, but that still has a long way to go. I mean, we talked about this a little bit before the interview, but there mm -hmm. is something that you thought about in response to. Oh, right, 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 right. You want to show that. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, you said it's just a thought, but it's even just the a thought, fact that yeah. you thought about it is it's really impressive. It's just a thought, but we, me and Sam always talk about like starting a black law firm and just like having black, strong black leadership at law firms because... The problems are so structural and it's so hard being in an environment where people are telling you they value diversity and like all partners are white males. You know, it's just like, it doesn't, sometimes it's just like, yeah, line no, up. Yeah. so we're like, we could like start a black law firm and we could like <laughs> Whose idea hire was it? black. I don't know. It's probably one of those days where we're just like talking and just like came up. Because um, I think Sam actually said, well, just to clarify, mm -hmm. in case they didn't hear, but so Angel and Sam have their own YouTube channel. So that's yeah. why she, she's talking about Sam, because they spent a lot of time together. Yeah. <laughs> but Sam was saying that that was your idea, and she oh, was impressed was by you. Idea. Yeah. 
I think it was. Before I got to law school, I was like, I'm going to start like a black Fortune 500 company. That's awesome. And like, she I'm also a- said that. She <laughs> said you wanted to do both. I you do. You want to start a business and you want to start a law firm. And right now you're doing your YouTube channel. Right now you're working at a law firm. Like, you're so ambitious. It's very oh, impressive. Thank you. I do want to do both. Cause I just want, you know, you just want people to feel comfortable. And it's so hard to feel comfortable when you feel like your culture is not the dominant culture in a yeah. workplace. But in a way, like, I guess it's not the same saying, it, it, in general, any kind of mi- minority, I think, in mm-hmm. a certain sense, if you think differently and you act differently, mm-hmm. you're going to always feel that in a sense. Yeah. But it might be different based on each person's experience. Yeah, true. Okay, so then, how was your how was your second year compared to your first year? Um, like, 2L versus 1L? Yeah. Um... I thought 1L was a little bit harder. Yeah. Um, but you took more units your second year. Yeah, so I don't know if y'all know, but the standard at Columbia is like about 13 mm-hmm. units a semester. In 2L, I took 16 per semester. Wow. Um, just because, I don't know, I wanted to get a lot of my requirements out the way um, so that I could do what I wanted to do as a 3L. I could like go abroad. I could do like all these programs and things like that. So, so you took an extra class, basically, because each class is like three to four units. Yeah, so I basically was taking an extra class per semester. Okay. Um, but I liked 2L. I liked the first semester because it wasn't standard classes. I was kind of like picking what What'd I What did you to choose? Learn. What kind of classes? Well, you know, I'm a nerd. I mentioned it earlier. So, like, I really liked tax. I think that was, like, my favorite tax? law school class. Wow. Who was your professor? Gratz. Grates? Okay. Gratz. Okay. You pronounce it grads. We talked a lot about policy, and it was interesting because, you know, Trump passed his, like, new tax plan, so we were talking about that a lot and, like, how it affects people, and I love talking about policy, so I just, like, loved going to that class so much, and I like numbers, too, so I was like, oh, great, numbers, Yeah, that's policy. unique in law school. Yeah, it is unique in law school. Well, people are really bad at numbers in law school, yeah. which is, it's scary, because I feel like empirical evidence is so important for yeah. like, the decisions you make, yeah. and, like, so many oh. law students I talk to, like, don't understand empirical evidence at all. And, and you're like, working with Ugh. business time long yeah business. so it's funny yeah what practice area are you working in now as at your firm um at Cleary? i did a bunch of capital markets and like okay. here in the dc office i'm doing more like structured finance things like loans and things like that what made you decide to split your summer between new york and dc well because of that policy aspect of dc i really wanted to try dc out sense. um <laughs> i was like i really like policy i like i like st- structural work like making i like feeling like i'm affecting multiple people at a time so i was like yeah. dc is definitely the place for that um is it is it living up to your expectations of, of in that sense yeah I, okay. everyone i talked to was, all the conversations are very like more political or more like policy oriented or more structural which i really really like as opposed to the experience you had in new york um at columbia i think people think that way but i think oh, in okay. general like columbia is more like i mean not columbia new york's more like wall street like businessy i'm a hedge fund manager, like, crunching these numbers, and, like, you're kind of thinking about your firm and things like that, whereas here they kind of think about people and, like, you know, it's, it's a different feel. Yeah, so um, one of the things we talked about a little bit before the interview that I think is interesting to talk about is classism. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let you talk about that because I think you know. What... Yeah, so I don't even know where to start. I think... <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, those... what, what was the first experience where you even thought about that, like, in what, life and what does classism even mean to you yeah like maybe actually starting <laughs> i'm like oh. <laughs> maybe starting maybe okay your experiences at law school because it mm-hmm. sounds like the experiences you had at the jackie robinson foundation maybe a little bit kind of address some Hopefully, of the issues yeah. yeah so what were the issues that you, that came up for you and specifically in law school and then how are you how did you approach it yeah i think that so starting with what classism is to me I think so many people think hear classism and they think of like rich versus poor, or like high, middle, high class, middle class, lower class. But I think so much of it is social and like the social cues you pick up from just like being in a certain environment um, and like the little things you say. And like it's kind of like the classism version of like microaggressions, like calling things like pricey and things like that. Um, and what I was telling you before the interview, like the Jackie Robinson Foundation kind of like prepped me to like. They paid for my first time abroad. Like, I had never been abroad. And, like, at Columbia, you hear people talk about their vacations all the time. Like, I've been here and there. And, like, as someone that didn't have those opportunities growing up, it can feel kind of isolating to be around people that, like, just seem so cultured and seem, like, to know so much about so many different things. Um, so at the firm, I think that's a huge – it can be a huge barrier because a lot of times you're going to 
very fancy dinners and very fancy lunches and you get a menu. Sometimes I get a menu and I immediately start Googling like what everything <laughs> means. I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. I've never been to fancy lunches before. I've never been to these type of restaurants. I like, think other people go through that and just don't talk about it. They don't say it. it. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it kind of hurts. I don't know. I think it kind of limits who's willing to yeah. go through that process. But what were you, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, I just think it's interesting because I think there's a, like, there's like a sizable group of people who, who fit in that category, mm-hmm. but it's just not a loud group. You yeah. know what I mean? For the most part, people are exactly. not talking about it. Exactly. So then it makes it seem like everyone else knows what they're yeah. doing, but literally like a yeah. lot of people don't know what they're doing. Yeah. There are a lot of, the, we have a club on campus for first generation professionals. Exactly. <laughs> and not necessarily everybody in that group, it falls in that category, but mm-hmm. still, you know, like, yeah, the, yeah. So. So, and I'm glad that you're willing to talk about it and you, you, you know, you bring it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I don't know, it's a tricky thing because it comes up in a lot of different ways at school. But luckily, Columbia, I think they try to help with it. They, like, have that, like, free suits thing. Like, if you have an interview, you can go get a but free But still, suit. Um, it's limited. Yeah. What do you think drives you most? What drives me yeah, most? Yeah, what keeps you driven or what motivates you? Hmm... I think my family motivates me a lot. Just like having that support system and just like having that bond with them and seeing like, like how far we've come. Thinking like when you think about starting your own, I mean, you've touched on it, but mm-hmm. thinking about starting your own firm mm-hmm. or starting your own business, like you, you want to do both of them. You talk about them in the same <laughs> sentence, you know what I mean? And it's like so, most people would be afraid to even think about the business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're already working at a, at a law firm. Like it's so much. So. Mm-hmm. Is it not daunting to you to even think about it like that? No, because I feel like I can do it. You know, okay. like I think I don't well, see it as impossible. What gives you What gives you the confidence? Huh, the confidence to say like this can be done. Yeah, to not even you. You don't even. It sounds like you don't even doubt the fact that you can do it. You're just like I can do it. Yeah, it's like a choice. Like will I do it? Will yeah, I not? exactly. Like, oh, yeah, I it's a very different approach. Yeah, I don't. You know, that's a good question. I feel like I've always. I used to been a little bit confident in like, I think, I don't believe in the bootstrap mentality, but I do think like h- hard work in certain environments can get you there and being strategic and networking and things like that. I really want to let's like help people, I guess. And like, why? if I can do that, why do I want to help people? Because I think life's just so unfair. You know, like some people just go through so many hurdles and like just oppressed, I mean, oppressed communities and like how ignored oppressed communities often are and just like put it on the back burner and like they're not addressed in public and I think if I can help a little bit then like I'll feel satisfied so if that's like starting a firm or starting a company that for people will feel more comfortable then I'll happily do it or starting a YouTube channel where people can get free information then I'll happily do it because I don't know I just like want to give people those opportunities. So I want to talk about the YouTube channel but before that I'm just curious like have you thought about what your business would be about or is it just a general like I want to start a business? Yeah, it's more of like a general thought okay. for now, but we'll see. Okay. So let's talk about the YouTube channel. You started while you were 2L? Yeah. Okay. January 2L. Jan- okay. Yeah. So right mid year mm-hmm. and um, it was your idea, but you reached out to Sam because you guys are like really close right? Is that the reasoning? Um well it was her idea. It was her she yeah. says it's your idea. Well, I I introduced her to YouTube. Okay. So I've always watched YouTube That's videos. so funny. I know. I always watch Sam's memory, first of all, is like a little jank. <laughs> she so. always tells me, I didn't even know about YouTube. She Angel. didn't. She didn't know yeah, about YouTube. So but, I was like watching YouTube videos. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm watching this. I'm watching that. And she was like, people watch YouTube videos? Like she didn't realize that was like a thing. That's crazy. And then when she was introduced to it, she like loved it. She was like always watching these YouTube videos, blah, blah, blah. So then she was like, oh. What kind of YouTube videos was she interested in? I don't really know. I think okay. she watched a lot of vlogs. Okay. Um, her eyes, I watch more like story times and like, you know, <laughs> things like that. She was watching like the action ones. Um, That's funny. Yeah. And then she texted me like, hey, like, you want to start a YouTube channel? And I was like, yeah, I already have all these ideas. I had like so many ideas because like, I thought one day I'm going to start a YouTube channel. But you really had thought about yeah, it? Yeah. But I never took that step to be like, that day is going to be today. Um, so I kind of like needed Sam to like nudge me and be like, let's start it. And I was like, oh, perfect. Let's talk about law school. I have all these ideas. These are videos we can do. Blah, 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 blah. So you guys are, how many months is it? It's seven months almost that you've started yeah. it? Six months? I don't, so Six months, yeah. So, and you're already at, I honestly, I saw it a few days ago. You were at 500 and mm-hmm. you're telling me now that you're at 700 subscribers. Yeah, almost that's, at 700. That's, yeah. that's insane. And I know that a lot of people are reaching out to you guys all the time, mm-hmm. asking questions. 
do you find that it's mostly people who are like black people who are asking you questions mm-hmm. about your experience? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find this it's mainly black people, some other minorities, but like okay. predominantly blacks. I think they can relate to our channel the most and the things we talk about and like our experiences. Um, and the questions they ask, it just shows that like. This information that we think is common knowledge it's is not, not common no. knowledge. Like so many people don't know how yeah. to apply to law school. They ask us the most, what we think are the most basic like questions what? about the LSAT. Like, how long do you study for the LSAT? Like, that's such a common question that people don't know <laughs> that we answer all the time. And just like, how are classes set up? Like, you know, like different things. Like, how much does the LSAT cost? Like, all these questions that you would think that you would know, but they people don't know them. So. It makes me happy to like feel like I'm kind of like helping people out. Do you guys take turns responding to the emails? I think it's like whoever just like so, notices. Yeah. Sam responds a lot more to the DMs we get on in our Instagram page, and I respond more to the emails. You get a lot of DMs. Yeah, <laughs> and people will ask like really no questions in DMs. People, I guess, people are more comfortable like on Instagram. Sam than seems email. like she's like she's very into Instagram in general. Yeah, I think she is. I'm into, I'm into Instagram, too, though. Okay. Yeah, but she checks it more often than I do. And okay. I check the email more often. I'm on my computer all the time, so. Has your life changed since you started making YouTube? Because, I mean, I, I, and maybe you think this, too, but I mm-hmm. think that you guys are going to, it's going to grow. It's, it is already growing. Like, the fact that it went from 500 to 700 in, it, mm-hmm. I think it was, like, a week. Because mm-hmm. I, I think I checked, like, a week ago. Because <laughs> I was going to congratulate you in this video that you hit 500. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> But you're like um, so beyond that. I think you guys are. I think it's. I think it'll be well past the thousands. Aww. And yeah, thank you. Because I. Because like you're saying, it's something people need, and people are already reaching out to you. So. Yeah, I think it has changed yeah. me a lot. Yeah. Just in terms of just like being conscious of what you say online. Um, <laughs> like, because like on our YouTube videos, we have to think like, what advice are we giving people? Let's make sure like we're giving correct advice. So just being conscious of like our influence now I guess and like people even in high school watching our videos like making sure we're not saying anything that's incorrect um so that's like changed me a lot just like having people reach out working on it with Sam has been really fun just like getting to know like a different work style like trying to make sure like we mesh well and make sure that we're like doing things correctly um so yeah I really like it like on that topic so Sam likes to talk about how disciplined you are and how your approach is well, she sees it a lot in the YouTube channel and the way that mm-hmm. you guys approach it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just in general, you tend to be very disciplined, plan things out. And mm-hmm. I think she notices it because she's like on the opposite end. Mm-hmm. Where she likes to be very spontaneous and that yeah, comes out in the video. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's cool to have both of those mm-hmm. in the video, I think. It's mm-hmm. good to have very di- different personalities. So yeah. um, I'm curious to hear like, if you could talk a little bit about being disciplined, mm-hmm. um, about the way you write out your schedule. Because mm-hmm. it's very, very... Details. It's very detailed. Yeah, so I have like a calendar and it's like my classes are blue and then working out is online. This is, yeah, Google Calendar. Yeah. Like working out is orange and like social things are green and studying's purple. (laughs) And I'm very detailed because I just want to make sure I have time to do everything I want to do. And the best way to do that for me is to like have a schedule. So. So, how much time do you typically dedicate towards working out? Oh, maybe like an hour and a half. Uh, and, and what period of time? Oh, what <laughs> period of time? Um, I like to work out in the morning. No, I, no, no, no. I mean like, okay, so an hour and a half uh, once, like once every few days or? Like... Oh, I see. Like three times a week. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a lot. Wow. It's um, three times a week. If there's a vacation coming up, then like seven times a week. So like, you know, you look picture, it's a little nice or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I just went on a vacation with my family. That's so I went on vacation with my family, and I was like, oh, the vacation's coming up. Gotta work out every day. But you also, eat, you also eat vegan. Yeah, I'm vegan, you're, you're yeah. Very, like, you're, you eat clean, so do you need that stuff? No, yeah. I, I, honestly, no matter what, I think it's great to work out. I think mm-hmm. it's never a bad thing. But I feel like you wouldn't need it necessarily to look good. I mean, you know, it's always nice to tone here and there. That's okay, and that's like, true. You know, so. <laughs> but yeah, I am vegan to, like, make sure I'm, st- I'm healthy. I guess I'm very intentional about, like, what I put in my body these days I haven't always been but I am now I feel like it sounds like you're very intentional about every aspect of your life I am yeah but, but it takes you far mm-hmm. yeah I'm really intentional I'm not like super spontaneous like I think things through before I act is that something that you like <laughs> was that a family influence thinking things through before I act yeah like did you is that something that you've taken from other people or it's just something that you've always had that it's just who you are huh I think I've taken that from other people my mom is very like She's thoughtful before she acts as well. Yeah. Um, 
just like growing up, she was that way. My yeah. siblings, I think they're that way too. I don't know. This isn't something I've thought about a lot. <laughs> like, how yeah. did I get the way I am? <laughs> I tend to lean towards those types. Of yeah, like how did I get how I am? I don't know. <laughs> Influence up here and there. Who knows? But I'm happy. I'm happy with like the way I approach things. Yeah, it's no, worked so it's, far. No, I think it's great. I think most people want to be more disciplined and find it hard to be. Mm -hmm. So it's it's amazing that you're able to do that. Cause, yeah. But I like having people around me that like aren't like that. Yeah, it helps me to have, like right. It yeah, has, it's nice like, to have both. Yeah, so it helps me not be so extreme. So like Sam, like my other friends that like kind of do things on a whim. I'm like, okay, maybe I can do that more often. Like that's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terrible to like just kind of do something spontaneously. Okay, so you spend okay, so you spend around like four and a half hours a week working out. Mm -hmm. And how do you schedule your your study time? Like, do you think this is gonna take me this many hours? So, like, I'll study for this class from this time to this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like guesstimate how long it's gonna take me to read for what. Um, and then it comes with practice. Like after like the first couple weeks of school, and you realize like how long it takes you to read for certain classes, and then I kind of overestimate on my calendar. So I'll add like. An extra hour, like let's say I think it's going to take me like three hours to read for property, I'll put like four hours on my calendar just to make sure in case anything happens or I take a nap or like, you know, <laughs> things happen for like, right, yeah. you can't schedule, you can't schedule for everything or someone can call you or things like that. But, so I overestimate to make sure I have time to do everything. Um, do you tend to like study for one class at a time or did you, which, or do you split it up? I study for one class at a time and it kind of... It kind of can be a negative thing during finals because like when you have a lot of finals coming up and you're like, I can't study for all of these at a time. So I'll like neglect the class for like a week, study for one and be like, okay, I'm done studying for this until like a couple days before the final and then like study for another class, finish that outline. But and it worked out for you. Yeah, it, it's worked out, but it's, I guess I just don't know how to like study for multiple things at once. I get confused. So like I'm very like structured with it. How do the skills that you use uh, in law school transfer or not transfer in a law firm life like what skills are common between the two and what skills are a little bit different yeah i think um i think law school is really suit is really suited for litigators because like we spend so much time right. writing and reading especially reading. the first year yeah like reading cases but you like, like the first year i like the first year academically but, but that like, but a lot of the classes we take are are right but like in our classes we're not like finding the cases you know like the yeah. cases are given to us in a case book and we know what's important and we read it whereas yeah. like as a litigator you're like out there searching for cases and, yeah like, you have to like put them all together and because i'm not trying to do litigation i don't think one was like particularly helpful um, I think the only thing that was really helpful was like my 12 classes, like negotiations and like... I, I heard a lot of great things about that Yeah, class. like learning how to speak actually to Who clients. Who was your professor? Um, I had Jensen. Okay. Did you know Jensen? Did you have her too? Uh, Jen Jensen. Uh, I, I want to take her actually in the fall. She's Hopefully really I'll good. Get her. I she's heard, really, really I heard good. she's the best. Yeah, she's amazing. And like she's so knowledgeable about yeah. negotiating and how to get... That's her job. Like, yeah. Because some of the other professors aren't necessarily... Like, that's not their full-time job, but that's her full-time job. Yeah, and she's also, I think she's, no, you said, you said you were going to be from Miami Yeah. I think she's Israeli, so never mind. Yeah, I think um, so. But she talks about that a lot, too, just, like, how cultural differences affect the way you negotiate. Yeah. So I really liked her a lot. That's yeah. true, and it's, I think that's, like, a huge benefit when you understand different cultures. Mm-hmm. Because then you, you know what people value, and you can come to, speak to them at their, at whatever like their head spaces. Yeah, and you're you aren't saying things and thinking they're interpreting it one way. Like you understand that in their culture they take things a different way. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh is there okay, the experiences that you've had so far in terms of the law firm experience, mm -hmm. is there is it very different now looking back at the three different experiences mm -hmm. compared to what you had what you had thought it would be like coming in? And has it been very different? So, like, my expectations versus reality? Expectations versus reality. Yeah, and then I'll mm -hmm. ask you another one, yes. Yeah, I think, yes. I think that I knew that it was going to be, I knew that lawyers work really long hours in firms and things like that. But I think I thought the work would be more difficult. And it's not? Yeah, I think, like, <laughs> well, this is a, from a transactional perspective. I think yeah. you learn on the job. Yeah. And, like, there's this expectation that like law school and all these classes like preparing you to be a transactional lawyer where like you're going to get there and it's going to be completely different than what you think and you have to learn on the job how to talk to that particular client and 
You know, it's just like, I think people can, it, you're capable of doing it. Like, I don't think that the fact that it's like a nice law firm and like whatever their prestige rankings are should deter people from applying only because the work is doable, <laughs> which was very surprising to me because I thought it'd be harder. I don't know. Um, maybe, was, but maybe it is also like the first few years the work is a little bit different, right? Right, yeah, because you're, you're not the one making like strategic decisions and things Especially like that. Especially the summer. Yeah. I think they give you harder work as you... They definitely give you harder work as you... As you, you become an you associate. Up the like ranks. Full, yeah. A first year, even as a first-year associate, I think it works a little bit harder. Yeah, but talking to... Luckily, I've got to talk to a lot of first-years and some of what their assignments are like, and they're like, this, it, you can do it. It's just a matter of fact of like putting in the, the time and like make, being disciplined and having that time management to have time to do all the work on your plate. Which you have down... You think I'll have it down in the law <laughs> firm life? I don't know, all those hours? I it don't know. sounds like you've, I mean, you've done it so far. So, yeah. Yeah. hopefully. <laughs> so, what is your schedule like now at, at a law firm? Um, I wake up in the morning around 6 40. You did a whole video on this, actually. So, we can also, I can also share that with people. Yeah, it's but, called A Day in Life as a Lawyer, Summer Associate Edition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I work, in, sometimes I work out in the morning, sometimes I don't. I get there at like 9 30. Um, and there's just so many different things going on throughout the day. It's like I'm doing work, but then I'm taking breaks to like take coffee breaks or like lunches with associates or they have like events for the associates um, either in the evening or in the day, like during the day. Yeah. So it's a lot of, it's not like a real lawyer at all just because of all the things that are going on, um, all the extracurricular things that are going on. But <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. Like I like the summer life because you're just there to learn about the firm. You're not... You're adding value, but that's not your primary role. It's really to like learn the Experience, firm, learn yeah. the people, and like get to know the partners and associates, and figure out like what kind of law you want to do. Okay, I think we're gonna start wrapping it up soon. If people have questions, you're welcome to ask. But okay. I do have another question. Mm -hmm. um, you are a little bit more entrepreneurial than the average law student, and I'm just curious. You actually mentioned that you came into law school not necessarily with the intention of becoming a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious how your experience has been so far and what exactly that means to you for your career path moving forward. Yeah, I came to law school and I just thought that like a law degree is something good to have on your resume. I thought that it makes people kind of listen to you a little bit more like, oh, this is a lawyer. I think like, that's kind of Let true. me listen. Yeah, yeah. so I, didn't, I had no expectation of like actually practicing yeah. or anything yeah. like that. I was like, maybe I'll like be a correspondent on CNN. Like, <laughs> yeah, I had like all these ideas of what I wanted to do. Um, and now, like, I've decided to, like, at least start out, like, as a lawyer, and I think... Why? Why? Loans is one part yeah. of it. <laughs> That's a huge part for a loan. Loans are a huge part of it, and I thought, I think it's interesting, like, I think law school was a lot more interesting than I ever thought it was going to be, like, the actual material, so I think I'm, I'm going to like it, like, being yeah. a lawyer, um, but I just do want to stay open-minded, and I want to keep my ears to the streets and know, like, what's going on, and how I can still be entrepreneurial as a lawyer, because that's not always encouraged. Like, no, it's definitely field. not. And it's cool that you have that ambition. I think it's like, it's hard. I guess it, there's like a theme where you just kind of don't let people put you in that box or whatever yeah. it is, because law school is definitely, it really does feel like you're boxed in in a lot of ways. Yeah, I agree. Especially because it is known to be risk averse mm -hmm. field, so it makes sense that it's like that. Yeah, it goes hand in hand. We gotta go against the grain. We have our, <laughs> our YouTube channels. We gotta make sure. <laughs> we gotta show people that like you don't have to like be in a suit and tie every day and like do, be a lawyer. Do a lot of people question that the fact that you're doing a YouTube channel? Um, I don't think a lot of people know. You mean like in the firm? No, no, just, oh, just in, in general, general. Like even in law school, like do people ask you like, oh, why are you doing a YouTube channel? Because like. It is it is rare mm -hmm. to be a law student and start your own YouTube channel. A lot of times people ask us, like, what encouraged us to do it. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious that, like, our channel is very directed towards, like, helping people kind of either get to the law or, like, understand the law. So in that sense, I guess it makes sense why we're doing it. But I don't know if people expect expected us to, like, take it so seriously and put so much time into it, like, as much time as we have. Did you think that you would? Did I think I'd put so much time into it? I don't know. I no, I don't think so. But at first, it started out as just like a playful idea, like we'll do this YouTube channel. But then it just like took off, and we liked it so much, and like we were enjoying it so much that it kind of turned into something bigger than I think either one of us thought it would. Um, it's gonna be amazing. It's a pleasant surprise. And would you continue it like even after you've you know, like after throughout you graduated yeah. and everything? Hopefully, I'd want to. It kind of depends on like what cities we end up in. It um, might be a little bit harder. But you but, guys. We're able to do, yeah. Yeah, because it's going to depend on like what cities we're in, but I think we'll be able to make it work. We'll have to like change the direction a little bit when we're actually lawyers, but... It'll make it more creative, I think, yeah. if anything. 
Yeah, we'll have to do like the how we did the law firm one and like kind of do like the different angles. That was cool. Stuff. That was really cool. I think it was really helpful to see two different perspectives instead of just one. <laughs> I'll let Sam know. <laughs> um, okay. I think that's pretty much it. Is there anything else that you think about your career path moving forward? Or like, do you have like a very, do you have an idea of where you want to be in a few years? Um, no. Or which direction your career path will take? No, I want to be flexible. I want to okay. like stay open minded and like, I think it can be dangerous to be too fixated on one thing, especially with, like, our world is unpredictable. It is. You never know what's going to happen. So but I, I, the so planner in you comes I up. know. The planner, yeah. the planner in me is like, Angel, what are you saying? But I think I want to stay open-minded, and I want to, like, make sure that I can go with the gradient and kind of jump ship if I have to or stay if I have to or, like, open my own business if I think it's the right time. So I don't have any long-term plans. I'm just going to, like, kind of see what happens. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for doing the interview today. Thanks for it's having really me. It's really cool learning stuff about you um, and being able to share that with. Oh, there are questions. Oh, okay. Uh, are you okay answering a few questions? Yeah, I am. Okay, so Bridget is asking during your summer job placements, what was the expectation in, term of, in terms of the number of hours per day you were required to work? Oh, summers aren't expected at all to stay late hours we were expected to be there from like 9 30 a.m to 5 30 p.m yeah. unless there's a after work event then you have to stay for the event but you're not expected to put in like long hours in the summer i've had to work like maybe one or two weekends but that's it that's good that's it so because that's not common after yeah it's not yeah. common after you become a full-time associate uh sh so follow up when you spoke to associates at the firms you were researching how did you approach them Oh, that's a good question. I would just send emails, or if I knew them personally, I would text them, or I would ask people that I know personally if they knew that person and then have them reach out to them. Um, but for the most part, I think an email is fine. So. Um, and I can't believe I didn't ask you this question, but somebody is asking you, what was your experience with the LSAT? Oh. <laughs> the channel is called Before You Take the LSAT, so I think that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I like studying for the LSAT. Yeah. I think it's a common theme in this interview that I'm a nerd, but like... It's okay. I mean, that is a pretty common theme in yeah. mafia. I, I like studying for it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I took a lot of practice tests. I studied at home. I was in Houston. How studying. long did you study for? Um, like two months. And then I retook it in October. So total, how long did you study for it? So total, I took it twice to study for four months, I guess. Okay. Both of them. Yeah. And did you take a class? I took power score, online class. Okay. Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah, I liked it. It's very flexible because you can watch them. You can watch the lectures whenever. So I never actually watched the lecture during my class time, which was like Monday night. I was always busy, but I would just like watch it the next day. So. And did you use any other books, or you just used everything Power Score? I just used everything Power Score, like all their online materials. It came with a book, so I like went through the whole book. Took a lot of the practice tests. So. Do you know how many practice tests you took total? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe yet, like maybe like ten. I don't know. I have no clue. I just made the number up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe not as much as I should have, but okay. I guess there aren't any other questions, but I appreciate that you. Yeah, guys thanks for the questions. questions. Yeah, it's always fun. Um, uh, yeah, so thank you so much for doing this interview today. I really appreciate it. Thankfully, now the rain has yeah, stopped. It's it. Again. it was perfect. I know. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. This is so fun. I like to talk about myself, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. For and yeah, up. so if, if people want to see more of Angel and hear more about her experiences, she actually has her own YouTube channel yeah. that we talked about, Angel and Sam LLP, and we'll have links to the videos um, below cool. this. So, All right. I hope. Okay.